Hey everyone, Dylan with another random making encounter and we're just gonna dive right in without any preamble. You don't get to see my smiling face this time. Lots to do and lots of little doodads to make and paint. I'm gonna start with some tables, some work tables for our project and why work tables you might ask, Dayland? Well, I received some ideas, some comments, some suggestions and one of those was to make a book binding workshop. I also received a comment to maybe have an Alice in Wonderland element to it. Maybe a medieval ruin or ruins. We're not gonna have too much ruin and ruinous here, but we will have a book binding workshop. I don't know much about book binding, but enough to kind of maybe fake this one. So all you book binders out there, apologies in advance. And then we're gonna have a little Alice in Wonderland Easter egg in our project. The first thing that I'm gonna be working on is a work table that's going to go underneath the window. If you have been following along, you know which window, the window of which I speak. But if you're new to the channel and new to this series, I will put a link at the end of this video to the appropriate video that, that talks about the interior of our nook. Now, I completely wing this stuff. I do not, do not plan, which is a, can be very problematic at times. But my big dr design driver here, my big things that are really determining how I'm building this is, really the two things are how much space do I have for the table and how does it fit in the space and so in this case I have two tables that I want to create to hold all of the bookbinding stuff I want one to fit under the window and within sort of the, the dimensions of the window so it needs to be a certain height and then the other one I want to be different than so bigger than taller than so that I have some variety and uh, I need it to still be small enough that everything fits and doesn't look too cramped. So that is about as far as my planning goes. I also wanted to create a bookcase so that I had lots of little shelves to put doodads that make things look visually interesting. I have a lot of video of this construction of this bookcase simply because I was too busy slathering super glue all over the wood and was worried that I was either going to glue my fingers to the wood or glue my fingers to the record button. So sorry about that, um, but it it kind of it kind of worked out in the end. Here is our little table, our work table for under the window with a shelf underneath. Here is our larger workbench that has sturdy cross bracing and some little nubbins that could imply something like a tenon joint. And then here is our super saturated, super glue bookcase of sticky doom. For those of you who have watched some of my videos, it doesn't matter what I'm painting. It could be rocks, it could be wood like this, it could be pretty much anything. My basic painting process is a dark base coat and then dry brushing and then transparent washes and then more dry brushing and then more transparent washes until you feel like you're a little obsessive compulsive and you've gone too far and you've wondered if you've made the right life decisions. And so really that is what I'm doing here. It's really just building up nice different layers of dry brushing and then using washes to kind of tie them all back together and then picking out highlights with a slightly different color of dry brush. This is kind of the result that you can get at the end. In this case, I'm also trying to use different colors for each of the main pieces of furniture so that there's a little bit of visual variety and a little bit of variety in the color. Now, one of the challenges with this project was that there are no doodads that are for bookbinding. You can't go and just get some bookbinding stuff to populate the nook. So I did 3D model those. Things like books and baskets and jars, things like that, you can find available either for free or for reasonable prices from other people that are doing 3D modeling. I'll put links down in the description. But the actual book binding materials like this finishing press, I modeled and will I'll make these available over to my patrons on Patreon. 
But um, you know, as they say, I'm, I'm pretty chuffed at how these turned out. I've never done anything with threads or with sort of complex shapes like the handles. And these turned out, I think, pretty well. I'm pretty happy. Now the painting process is what's called a Zenithal highlight. I'm gonna start with a dark primer base coat. And then I will spray a white primer from sort of a high angle to just catch the tops and the highlight. And what this does is it starts to create shadows, which creates some definition kind of right out of the gate. And then I'm using what are called speed paints. So these are by Army Painter. This is not a sponsored video, but Army Painter speed paints, which allow me to paint in one layer a color and get kind of all these variations in tonality and allows that Zenithal undercoat to really shine through. Now, if you're painting a lot of doodads, this is a very quick way to get some very nice results without spending endless hours painting. Now, obviously, if you really wanted this to be like up close and personal details, you can spend a lot more time really picking out and refining your painting. But for the sake of, of really getting these things populated and really for the amount of importance any one given item might have in this nook, I think the results here are actually quite nice. And I'm very, very, very happy with the results that the speed paints get. I use them a lot in miniature painting. Uh, I do spend more time when I'm painting miniatures, miniature miniatures, like figures to really pick out more detail, but they are a super effective painting material. I use that same process for things like the stitching frame and the press. I did do a little bit more detail painting just to pick out some highlights because those are the hero pieces, but the basic process is the same. Now I did feel like the walls were a little boring, so I decided to paint the lower half of the walls. And I made the wise decision to use this lovely sort of urine yellow color. Uh, I immediately sort of regretted it, but you know, damn the torpedoes full speed ahead. Uh, I'm just gonna keep 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 on with the keep on. Now, one reason I did use these colors, these types of colors, is in ye olden times, the only colors that were really available were earth pigments. Things like yellow ochre, iron oxide. I'm not really sure where this green came from. If you're a medieval pigment uh, authority, please post a comment down in the description. But the idea here is that if you're building something and you're working on something that's kind of a, a period piece, the reality is that there were limitations in any given period to the types of colors and pigments that were available. Blue was actually semi-precious lapis, uh, and it would not be used on a wall. It would be cost prohibitive, really, uh, in most cases, to paint you know, a semi-precious stone on the wall. So earth tones, earth pigments are the order of the day. Once the walls were dressed up a little bit, it was time to start to glue things in place. So the bookcase goes in, the big workbench goes in because those walls are already in place. I don't have to worry about positioning it and trying to figure out where the table goes with relation to the window and the third wall. You can use reversible materials. There are some glues out there that can be removed. But again, I figured, you know, I'm just gonna go for broke here and just permanently glue things in place, including the door, which was probably at risk of either being stepped on or lost at this point. And so a little bit of hot glue to hold that in the cracked position. I added some books and some crates with some, some stuff in them just to fill up the spaces and provide things for your eyeballs to rest on and explore. Super excited about this broom that I made. If you're interested in how I made the broom, um, I can maybe post a little quick video on that. Comments below if you're interested. And then one of the biggest things that I kind of had to noodle around on was how to create stacks of paper. This is a book binding shop and there will be lots of stacks of paper. And so stacking little pieces of paper seemed really not like a great idea. And so this is blue insulation foam. It's XPS foam. It's very, you're looking for just a really fine grained foam. And I'm taking a fresh razor blade and I'm creating these horizontal scores along the edge. I am not 
pressing deep, I'm not pressing hard, and I'm being very careful of my fingers. Once that's done, I paint the edges in the direction of the cuts. And this is kind of a janky brush, and so it's a little on the stiff side, which helps kind of really open up those cuts. And, and this is the final result. And again, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty jazzed at how this turned out. Uh, it was kind of dumb luck that it worked. And here is our Alice in Wonderland Easter egg. So this is just a woodcut or a engraving from the original, one of the original engravings, shrunk down on the inkjet printer and glued as that final top piece. Now the third wall is not glued in place yet because it makes it easier to both shoot video and get you a good look at the interior, but also work on the interior. So I temporarily held it in place to identify where this last table goes. At this point, we're really in the home stretch of gluing in the last bits of paper, the last stacks. And since this paper is bright white, these are really the most dominant things visually in the nook. And so I'm trying to be a little strategic in how I distribute these throughout the nook to really draw your eye deeper into it and through the nook itself. At this point, I realized that our poor bookbinder did not have a place to sit. Kind of an oversight, didn't make anything to sit on. So I knocked up this stool with copious amounts of super glue and some balsa scraps. Using the same painting technique, dark base, dry brush, rinse and repeat, I was able to really quickly pop together a place for our happy bookbinder to sit. With that, I think that this has enough to it to call it, call it for now. The opportunity here is to continue to add small details. There are no small hand tools, which would be everywhere. There would be lots of small hand tools. Uh, things, there are some, some space on the shelves that are feeling a little empty. But again, for the sake of getting this out into the world, getting this in front of you and getting you inspired to, to go and make your own nooks, I felt like we had the high points. We were really hitting the high notes of what might be in a book binding shop. I'd like to take this time to give a big shout out to my patrons. We picked up, I picked up a new patron, Jesse and family. Thank you for your support, W. Your support, your continued support is truly appreciated. If you're interested in supporting the channel, say support one more time, supporting the channel, be sure to pop over to my Patreon page. I do try to post at least weekly with sneak peeks, digital downloads, resources that I'm using for my projects, things to help and get really communicate with you and, and let you know what's kicking around in my brain and what is on the horizon. It truly helps me continue to do these kinds of projects and get this out in the world. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, feed the algorithm. I do try to answer all questions and comments. Follow me over on Instagram. Creation is a collaboration and I hope that you find in these videos something to spark your imagination or gives you some tip or trick that helps you on your creative journey. As always, it is great to spend time with you and we will see you again on another random making encounter.